The Ogun State Government has announced September 21 as the reopening date of schools in the state. The students will be resuming for the first time after the nationwide closure in March due to the COVID-19 pandemic will bring students in SS3 who are currently writing the West African School Certificate Examination. The state government announced that all students have been given automatic promotion to the next class, including automatic placement for primary six students in public primary schools into JSS-1 of public secondary schools. The special advisor to Ogun State Governor on Communications, Remy Hassan, joins us now uh, to talk about this latest move in Ogun State. What protocols and preparations have been put in place for resumption of schools, especially government-owned schools? Thank you for having me. Uh, well, uh, if you recall, the uh, exit classes actually resumed uh, some weeks back. And there were protocols uh, put in place uh, to guide their return to school. Uh, what we have done in this case is to do a further amendment of that protocol in such a way that uh, uh, we will not have any form of clustering or crowd within the school. And uh, the way it has been done is such that uh, the primary one to primary three uh, JS1 to JS3 uh, will come to the school uh, between the hours of 8 and 11. And the other classes will resume at 12. Uh, and they will uh, be out of the school uh, by uh, 3 o'clock. That is the way it's been staggered. In, in that way, you are sure that uh, uh, social distancing can be guaranteed then every school is to provide uh, a, an isolation center within the school uh, in such a way that if anybody shows any symptoms, such a person can be isolated there, first aid treatment carried out, and further treatment uh, may be necessitated depending on the symptoms that such a person uh, manifests. Use of face mask remains compulsory. Hand washing facilities have been made available in all the schools. Then we also, as a state, said those in the uh, uh, daycare category, the kindergarten, uh, age one to five, shouldn't be in school at this time. They should still remain at home because uh, they are quite uh, vulnerable. And bringing them to cluster together will not in any way help their health. So those are a few of uh, the protocols that the state has put in place for uh, the elementary and secondary schools. For the various uh, tertiary institutions, the management of the schools have been told to work out their uh, guidelines and right. bring it up to the state COVID-19 team for approval, such that guarantees that the health and safety of both students, lecturers, and staff are factored into whatever protocol they are coming up with. Well, let's talk about the automatic promotion. A lot of persons say, well, it's a good idea, but how will teachers access, assess rather, uh, how the students progress? If you recall, as a state, we are about the first, as soon as this lockdown of schools was announced in March, we are about the first state to start a DG class. And that DG class kept the student engaged that DG class, even up till this moment we're talking, is still running, and it will run till they resume actual in-person uh, schooling that is proposed for 21st of September. It then means that, yes, some ground must have been lost, but not all has been completely lost because these students were kept uh, gainfully engaged all through this period. And so... Uh, promoting them to the next class may only simply mean that uh, nothing has been lost. It simply then calls for more effort by the teachers to ensure that whatever other areas of deficiencies that are noticed as they are coming back for in-person learning now, uh, the teachers should take immediate step uh, to mend whatever uh, noticeable pitfalls that uh, crop up in the cost of having physical engagement with the students. What is the reason for exempting the early child care development and education classes comprising pupils of three to five years from resuming? 
their vulnerability most especially because they are still at the age where clustering for them is a way of life. And when you bring them together, they want to play. And you don't know who is a, a carrier of this virus, whether among themselves or even among the teachers. And at the end of the day, you expose them unnecessarily. Unless and until we are sure that it is safe to bring them under this learning environment, it is still advisable at this stage that they stay home. Okay, what does the government intend to do to sustain the drive for safety? Because there is this tendency that, yes, initially we will show all forms of seriousness, but how is the plan or what is the plan to sustain that level of uh, safety? Uh, majorly, it is the uh, awareness that will keep driving through the media, through the community leaders, and through every other instrument available that uh, people can be reached. Any time I'm privileged to speak to the media, I don't fail to mention that the greatest problem that we have in managing this pandemic is the attitude of our people as to think that maybe the COVID-19 pandemic is not as serious as government is portraying it. But the truth is that it is real, it is serious. The fact that it hasn't come close to you doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And it is not an invitation for you to become lawless and careless. So we will keep sensitizing our people through all the means effectively just to make them realize that we still have this on our hand, even though we are doing some things to show that uh, all of what represented the lockdown as at March is being eased at this time. It is not that it is over, but we don't want to completely shut ourselves out Normalcy must return, but it has to be gradual. And therefore, nobody should throw caution into the wind. All right. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on the news. Your time is appreciated. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me.